To make elderflower mead, we'll be using the following ingredients. Dried elderflower, honey, red star, premier blanc yeast, the juice of one lemon, the juice of one orange, a scale, straining bag. And on the back row, we'll be using Enough water to give us one gallon or four liters, depending on how you feel about it. We'll need something to do primary fermentation in, preferably something with a wide mouth opening. We'll need something to do secondary fermentation in. Your liquid stopper is going to come in handy. We are also going to need, later on, if you want to know how much alcohol you're going to be making, a hydrometer. And of course, we've made sure that everything has been sanitized beforehand in terms of our glassware and utensils with, I'm using star sands. If you're using one step or any of the other sanitizers of choice, please feel free. And that's what we're gonna be making to make this wine. We are going to measure out 30 grams of elderflower dried elderflower. We're going to use a scale, even though he never does. Now, the reason why she's putting that into a measuring cup is because for those of us who don't have scales, and all we've got are measuring cups, <laughs> we'll at least have an idea of just how much 30 grams is in a measured cup. and 30 grams. There we are. All right, so what is 30 grams in a cup? 30 grams in a cup is about, it's like two, two thirds, thirds of, of a, a cup. cup. All right, we're going to transfer that. Oh, we're going to have our, no, no, put that in a, in a straining bag. Hold on. As I recall from the elderberry wine makings, having a plate underneath the straining bag is probably going to be pretty helpful. <laughs> Especially for me. There we are. And if you'll go ahead and tie that off. There we go. And next thing we need to do is we need to put that into boiling water. We're going to make kind of a elderberry, elderflower tea. We put on two quarts of water to boil, and we're going to add our elderflower packet and let that steep for about 10 minutes. We'll add uh, enough water to bring that up to the two liter point after we, or four liter point, after we let it steep and add the honey. Now that our boiled elderflower has cooled down to almost, well, not quite room temperature, it's still a little warm. No, nah, it's hot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so it was steam wafting up, that, that's hot. <laughs> We're going to add about three pounds of honey.
Okay, let's get all of that out of there. And we're going to add a little bit of that water to loosen up that the rest of that honey and get it all out of the jar. Doggone right. You realize how much how expensive this honey was? <laughs> I think gave me a little drop of honey out of this jar. So, all right. now with that, and we are going to rinse this jar out and add this honey to it. We're going to let this uh, this uh, honey sweetened elderflower mixture uh, come down to a where it is warm, just a bit lukewarm. I think will be the temperature that we'll use. Uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, add our remaining uh, water to bring up to make sure that we have at least one gallon. Uh, and then we'll transfer that into a fermenter. So what we'll do now is just uh, let this let this cool down. Now it's time to add the lemon and orange juice. We're adding the juice of one whole orange. So we'll cut that up. Making sure that I don't cut off my fingers. And get him in here. <laughs> All right. Now, some of you, if you prefer, you can use the orange peel instead. I'm sorry, the orange zest. Um, I just happen to prefer using the uh, the juice of the orange. Now, our lemon is acting as our citrus blend substitute. And I usually use half a lemon for that. With that having been said, the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and add those to our uh, older flower mead-ish mixture. Do we add the pulp too? Uh, you can because this will actually get uh, left behind during the racking. I mean, you don't make a conscious effort of putting the pulp in, but... <laughs> We're going to add in uh, some of the rest of our remaining water. We started with two quarts. I figured the honey was worth about a quart. And I'm going to add in a little bit more now to bring us up to our four quarts. And I'm going to stir this in or have uh, no, no, stir this in. And then I want to take a hydrometer reading. Okay, our hydrometer reading came in at a respectable 1.108. Okay, now before adding in our yeast, we want to transfer our mixture into our primary fermenter. And if anyone has seen this, you know I have a fairly decent success rate of trying to get all of it in without spilling it all. Very hey, good. One of my better efforts. All right. Uh, what we want to do now is that we want to go ahead and add our yeast. And before my assistant gets ahead of the action here, <laughs> uh, we're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And in a moment, we'll see how that operation goes. Okay. It's now time to add the magic ingredient, which will turn our elderberry juice into wine. So we're just going to sprinkle in our yeast. Uh, there's no need to hydrate it, but if you want, hey, feel free. Other than that, that's all that's really required. We're going to put in our put on our cap, 
Now, for those of you who don't have this particular brand of fermenter, uh, this one does have a built-in airlock, which is what the little red dot's for. It also has a standard, uh, 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 a standard airlock uh, that will fit in here as well, but I stopped using it because I really don't need to see, you know, it in action to know that everything is working. Uh, all right, now that our creation has been labeled, we know that we are making an elderflower mead. We started it on this date, and our original gravity reading started at 1.108. So again, we're just going to let this uh, do its thing in, in, in primary. Once a day, we're going to go ahead and give it a, a vigorous little stir for the next three days at least. Uh, to incorporate some additional oxygen into the musk after about no certainly no later than uh, the fifth day i usually don't uh, aerate after the after the fourth third day uh, we're just going to let it sit uh, for the five to seven days that we're going to let it sit in primary we'll then rack it uh, into our secondary container and then once again we'll let it uh, ferment uh, for the next four to six weeks and then repeat the process of racking until the uh, until the meat has gone clear after about uh, six months or so, if it clears anything like the elderflower wine, we'll just go ahead and bottle it, uh, do a tasting at that point, and then we'll do a final tasting at the one-year mark. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, it's now been 18 months since we started making this elderflower mead, and it is now time to do that 12-month tasting <laughs> that I forgot to do. Um, I mean... First observational notes. One, yeah, the wine, the mead, turn clear. Uh, Elderflower mead, born 5, 2021. 20, AVB came in at 12.86%. And, of course, it's been pasteurized. Now, for those who might be seeing this for, like, the first time and might be wondering, why is he pasteurizing his, his wines and meads? Well, it's simple. Uh, I don't use sulfites in my wines or meads. I prefer to keep things a bit more natural, a bit more grocery store friendly, as it were. And uh, since all of my wines are, and meads are generally back sweetened, uh, I have to wait to prevent them from continue, continuing on with uh, re-fermenting and perhaps producing a potential bottle bomb. So one way of doing that is to use pasteurization, which kills the yeast and stops fermentation from reoccurring right then and there. That's why I pasteurize my wines and meads. Uh, we're going to get right into this one. If I can... Hold on to my dog on corkscrew. Get right into this one and let's see what we've got. Ah, this is using one of the long corks, cork, uh, wine corks too. Came off in one piece, which is usually kind of a problem with me. Smells okay. <laughs> Let's find out what it what it tastes like in the glass. For a small sample to begin with, because it is just before twelve in the afternoon, a bit early. I'm still drinking coffee, so it's still a bit early. Uh, let's see what we've got. You smell the honey, then you smell the yellow flowers. Okay, and at 12.86%, you kind of smell the alcohol. Now, let's see. First thing that hits you are the elder flowers. I tend to use uh, more than the recommended amount when I when I added in the elderflowers. I think I like the elderflower mead more than I like the elderflower wine, only by virtue of the fact that the honey does give it uh, a nice smooth finish. But even though this has been back sweetened. And it's not dry by any means. On the tongue, it does have a rather dry taste to it. Um, 
I don't recall since it's been <laughs> 18 months, whether or not I used uh, uh, the tea bag as the tannin substitute, which is probably what's giving it that bit of a stringency on the back end. But yeah, that's what I'm getting on the tongue. I have to check my notes again, but if I did use, uh, uh, add it in the uh, tannin, I would probably not add that if I make this again. Uh, I'll probably make that recommendation in the ingredients list, which you can find in the description section of the video. Probably in the comment section as well, so I also put the uh, ingredients. Except the acidity probably tone that down a notch as well and really that's what winemaking as a hobby really comes down to you take a given recipe you try it you make adjustments you try it again and so on and so forth until you finally get something that you quite really would enjoy and would make it in <laughs> more than one gallon batches but overall this one gallon batch uh, uh, with the addition of the corrections It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. For, so for me, uh, make the two corrections, which will be reduce the amount of tannin, <laughs> AKA tea bag, and uh, reduce the acidity just a bit, AKA lemon juice. And uh, yeah, this will be all right. Yeah. So when I make this again, those will be the two adjustments that I make, and this one will probably be on point. So I'm going to keep this one short. <laughs> uh, again, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify button, and I'll continue to do these on a more regular basis. Uh, so uh, there we go, elderflower mead.